Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Uh, it has been just a day since we last spoke. So um, I'm really here to talk about the next step in this series of videos that I'm certain y'all are getting tired of looking at. Um, so this all started out two days ago. I did a video in view to create a accordion component that looks something like this, where you can expand and collapse and get the UI. And I immediately wrote it um, using Vue.js, Ionic, and built this complex uh, solution. Uh, you can check the video out um, on my YouTube channel. But uh, in the end, I ended up digging in and found a better way to do it with HTML, which is what I'm going to show you here. But what I'm really trying to do is, once again, show you how great Ionic is and show you you know really how similar these two technologies of Vue.js and React.js are because I took the core of the code that I used to write the Vue solution and I ported it over to React and built the exact same solution in pure JavaScript and HTML. Um, there were some interesting things I had to do because I couldn't find an equivalent of slots in React and what uh, so I had to use render methods. So what's happening is that the title here is rendered in a separate method uh, from the parent, the title here, and the, and the body also. Those are the two real main differences, but I'm just gonna quickly walk through the sample. I'll post the code. I think this uh, accordion components uh, is a pretty interesting um, UI, and I think something that might, that actually would probably look good in a mobile application. So uh, once again, this is Aaron Saunders. This is my YouTube channel. I post stuff about Vue.js and Ionic and React. Um, and this is going to be a React video, so please make sure you click the like and subscribe button. And let's hop into code. I'm just going to walk through the code and, like I said, post the code for you to get access to. So um, stick around and check out what I have to show. All right, let's get to the code. So um, just to quickly, once again, show you the functionality of the application. I have a list. In the list, um, I can expand and collapse to see the items. Um, certain most of you kind of know how an accordion works. Uh, this is the content that you see here is from uh, random me, sorry, random user API. Um, oh, and I forgot to do my kind of pitch for my book. This isn't really the audience because you guys are probably React developers, but just to let you know, um, if you're interested, I'm actually writing a book on building an app with the VJS Ionic framework and Ionic. I'm sorry, the Ionic community has a uh, community SQLite capacitor plugin that I'm integrating in this book. The book is about 60% complete, but I'm looking for folks to just come here, um, give me an idea of how much you pay for a book. I'm trying to figure out what people are paying for books now. This is the second book that I've written on mobile development. Um, the first one was on an older technology accelerator. If I get decent response from it, I'll basically, the same way I ported the other view app to React, I'll port this book to react and i'll write the exact same um content uh in react all right now uh, i've done pitching and sell peddling my goods let's get back to where we were so the random user me generator is an api that you can use to basically just get a random list of users it's pretty straightforward you make an http request you provide a result and it returns the number that you want in our case here i'm uh, just asking for 10 results back I've used fetch instead of, uh, I think this code is like a jQuery, which shows you how long this thing's been around. Um, but I use fetch to get the data. So let's get back to the app. And let me just kind of walk you through how the home page works, and then I'll explain to you how the accordion component is functioned. So this is uh, the blank template from Ionic. Uh, as usual, I took all the meaty stuff out of the content and I put my own stuff in. Um, and let's start at the top. Um, I'm using the use state to hold my data. So I have a, I'm going light on the TypeScript here because it's more about the content than less about the TypeScript. So I've created this, um, this local state variable called data um, where I'm keeping track of the results of the loading up the random users. I'm using the fetch API here. I make a call with fetch to get the results. The results are in JSON. So I need to kind of convert the body that I got to JSON, and then I get the results here, and I set my local state variable uh, with the results I got from user me. I mean, random user me. 
since I, ha I have no direct dependencies and I want this to kind of run as I think it's called a component will mount, I just put this empty brackets and it should only run once when the component mounts. This is just the console log for me to see the data. I'll remove it for here. And then now we get to our, our app. Um, regular Ionic page, Ionic title. We have our Ionic content component. I put the default padding around the side here. And then here's my um, accordion component. Let me see, is there anything else I want to cover? Nope, that's the meat of it. But here's my accordion component. My accordion, uh, I need to turn that GitHub thing off when I do these videos because it keeps popping up annoying me. So um, my accordion component takes, looks like it takes three properties. It takes the list of data or the data you want to pass in. It takes a uh, render function called to render the header section, which is what you're seeing right here. And then it takes a render panel function, which renders the content that you're seeing in here. Now, for those who are familiar with Vue, um, this is the part that I just use Vue slots for. Vue has this, this ability called slots, and I just have a slot. In the Vue example, I didn't do one for header. I just have a slot for the body, which here is this render panel. So what it allows you to do is to use the accordion component um, pass any generic list of data in, but then also control from the parent component how you want to render the content that you're passed in. So the accordion component encapsulates all the behavior for hiding and showing and clicking and highlighting. Mm -hmm. And um, the parent component is focused more on just presenting the data and controlling how you want the different sections of the uh, uh, list to render. So that's why I've created this separation. Um, when you see inside here the render function, I'm just using some I'm just using some CSS here to control how the header is drawn. Um, the interest the important thing to note is how I'm getting the specific item back in my render function and using the values from the item that's returned to control what I display. And the same thing with the with the panel. Um, I'm getting this item uh, passed back as part of this uh, render panel function and I'm using it to control what I display here. So that's kind of how we're using the render function. So if I jump, let me save this. If I jump over to my actual accordion, um, we have our TypeScript for the uh, defining the types for the parameters that are passed in. I could get more specific with this and I think I can, no, I don't want to go down there. Uh, hey, yeah, let me do it just to show people. I could go, we can do something like this to say this function needs to look like this item, any, and then I think I want to do this like it doesn't return anything. So we'd say void um, kind of both of these. Right. So that's the type that um, these functions are looking for. And why is it complaining? Render header void is not. Uh, oh, it re needs to return to react, a react node. So do I is the right type react dot node? Oh, it's react node. So let's see if that gets our types right. It looks like it gets our types right. So basically what it's saying for my list, it has to be a, an array of type any, because I don't know what a specific type is for what you get from back from render user me. But for each one of these guys, it has to um, be a property that takes a, an item um, and has to return a React node. So once I set these types, I'm making it so that um, when I come in here and let's see if I can just show you what I'm trying to do. If I comment out render header and this is saying accordion is missing, uh, the render header property render header is missing. So, and then if I do this render header, it kind of lets me know what this property is supposed to be. So that's one of the cool things that TypeScript gives you. It, it lets you know kind of what type this function is expecting. So if I just do this string, right? Um, you can see here that it's saying I'm getting a TypeScript error because this proper this property render header is expecting this type of function to be returned, right? So that's one of the advantages of TypeScript for those of you who are out there who are TypeScript haters. Uh, so let me kind of put this back the way it is and get back to the code. Okay, so we have our two functions, render header and render body. And so now let's go back 
to our um, accordion. So we have our list, render header, render panel. Um, they're getting passed in as properties. Um, and then the, comp the my accordion component really only has, has one function and that's the handle getting clicked. Uh, um, but before I talk about how we're doing the, uh, the um, uh, anim animation and kind of sliding these panels up and down, let's talk about uh, what's going on here in this render method. So in the render method, I take the list, I iterate through the list items, I get an index, which I set as the key. I have my button, which is this top part here. And as you can see, the button is, is where the render header is called, and that's how we control how the title here is drawn. And then the panel calls render panel, and it just renders the item. You can see I'm passing both of these functions a specific item that we want it to render. And then the function knows how to render it, which we saw from the home page. Now, how the animation basically works is that when you, so let me click on Flynn Russell. When I click on Flynn Russell, what's happening is the first thing that I'm doing is I'm using you know, plain old HTML5 JavaScript to toggle the list, the class on this object to active so that we know that it's active. Um, and then what this function does here, it gets all, because what we want to do is in this scenario, I don't have another panel open. I only have one panel open, but what this does here is, uh, what this does here, it gets all of the panels by the class name panel. And I get an, and I get, uh, I think it's called an HTML element. Yeah, a collection of HTML element to kind of get the type scripts to play nice together. Um, I take that collection and I convert it to an array and then I iterate through each one of the items. And then what we're doing here is we're using this current target uh, next sibling because all I have is I just have this element. It's next sibling is the panel. So for all of these, the, there's two, there's two elements. There's the header and there's the panel. When I click on the header, it's next sibling is the panel. And so I want the panel. So what this is doing is it's looping through all of those panels. Um, it's looping through all the panels and then it's saying, all right, the target that I clicked on the header, if it's the next sibling is not the current panel, then make the height null, which will course, which will force it to collapse. So you see when I'm clicking on that, it's closing the other panel. So setting the height to null, uh, sorry. Setting the height to null causes it to collapse. And then the other thing that I'm trying to do is to, um, on the panel, after I collapse it, I want to kind of toggle it out of the active state. And the reason why I want to do that is I want to make sure basically everybody's closed and everybody's inactive. And then the last thing I do is I find the one that I actually clicked on and I toggle its height. So if it's already expanded, I close it. And then um, if it's not already expanded, then I open it. And that's really all it does. And that's the magic of it. The The cool thing is that the uh, CSS, if I, let's take a look at the CSS that's associated with it. The CSS really handles everything for me. Um, we handle the transition on the accordion. So that's how we're getting kind of this transition happening. Um, the hover, the active in the hover is how we're getting the uh, background of the button to change. And then the panel here is this bottom part. And then we have the transition for when we're modifying the height. It does a two seconds and it does an ease out. And that's really it. Um, the lesson that I learned here out of all of this was that, you know, sometimes it is uh, better, I won't say better, but sometimes um, HTML and CSS can solve your problem. You don't need to kind of go all out and, and find a more complex way to, to do it. Um, what also is very cool, and I hope you've noticed that if, you're, if you've come here as an Ionic developer, is that um, because it's based on JavaScript and HTML, the solutions that you have can go back and forth between um, a JavaScript, React, Vue, Angular. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this. Please make sure to like and subscribe. Please give me uh, feedback if there's other things that you would like to see. And uh, thank you very much and have a good day. Bye. Once again, please swing by 
and um, check out my book. The link's in the bio. Uh, give me your thoughts on what you think books like this should cost. Thanks. Take care. Bye.